the, to the size of the sphere um, is much smaller than in the case of a nanoparticle. You can see that more clearly on the next slide where we wanted to put all this information on a single plot um, that was independent of the volume fraction of the filler. So this is a complicated but I believe useful uh, plot for looking at filled uh, polymer systems. On the vertical axis is the volume of the interfacial zone. That's the red stuff. Um, relative to the volume fraction of the particle, and that's the blue stuff, right? So it's the volume of the red shell uh, over the volume of the particle. Now this shell we have arbitrarily picked to be of some thickness. It is compositionally the same as the rest of the polymer matrix, but it implies that near the particle the physics, the polymer physics might be a little different. Perhaps the entanglement density is a little bit differently. Perhaps the relaxation times are a little bit different. Um, so that's what's on the vertical axis. On the uh, horizontal axis is the aspect ratio. And so this is why we wanted to be able to put plates, spheres, and rods all on the same plot, where one is obviously a sphere, aspect ratios greater than one correspond to rods, and less than one corresponds to plates. Now, the way you use this plot is the different deltas are shown in the four different curves. And so the deltas, um, let me just remind you, are the relative size of the red to the blue. So the delta of 0.01, the very bottom curve, corresponds to macroscopic particles. You have a little tiny bit of polymer that's modified in some way by the presence of this macroscopic particle. And so if you put in, let's say, 10 volume percent of particles, and they're macroscopic, you're going to have one 